I could be wrong. And the one up closer to me, the one up closer to me, I think was 180000 or something. Mm -hmm. yeah, some half a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, easy. Easy. All right. Welcome, everybody, to this um, this meeting of the Rochester Select Board. And first, uh, before we start, we're going to confirm the open meeting law conformity, knowing that the agenda has been posted in three public places and on our website and emailed to interested parties, correct? So that's good. We can move forward. And I'm going to start with, does anyone have any additions to the agenda tonight? That If you haven't seen the agenda, that you have. Mason? Uh, yes, I would like to uh, have an opportunity right after the 4th of July at the end of the new business. If you could slip me in there, that would be great. Um, about? Uh, you? Mason? Bingo. June, could I make an addition to the sure. agenda? The consolidated communication. Mm -hmm. Just that would be all that would be necessary. We're just taking additions to the agenda. If you guys that just came in want to add anything or not, if you're just here for the everything that's already on there. All right. So I would like to start first with uh, accepting the minutes that were typed up from the last meeting. So they look good to me, and I'd move we approve those. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. Okay. So go for you. And we've got um, it goes. So we'll move right to the uh, the main attraction here. We have um, Frank Russell. You have something that you want to talk about? Yep. No, I want to talk about the recent storm damage. I'll speak um, about the storm damage on Maple Hill, and I think I don't, I don't know if Joanne Edwards is going to be speaking about Wing Farm or Critter Hill Observe. Say again? I'm up here to observe right now. Okay. All right. All right. But as, as, as you know, since you haven't arrived here from another planet, we recently had a lot of you know, storm damage from that, what is it, April 15th? Uh, yes. Oh, April 15th flood. Um, I've already showed this to the select board members, and I'll give them a copy of the photographs here. But that's a, that's a photo of the um, that, that's a photo of the um, of, of the water carrying down, uh, you know, mud and gravel. Um, I mean, it's. Um, I mean, I, I looked out my window and then, you know, you know, got some clothes on and Greg White told me I now had riverfront property. Right. But that's, but that's, that's the, um, the that's, that's, that's uh, Maple Hill Road and all the, all the, all the water carrying down, you know, mud, you know, you know, road material basically, you know, um, you know, you know road dirt and, uh, um, and, and gravel. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Those are the pictures I'm showing. They're yours too. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And, and this is uh, this is a picture of the equipment that arrived actually very quickly. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, within about an hour or so, um, Charlie Smith was there with all kinds of equipment, and I think the response time was really very very good. I mean, I'm not sure what there was to do with all that equipment then. It was just all in motion, and but he was there, and I mean, that was. I mean, I was feeling confident about that. You know, somebody was, you know, aware and responding. And I'm sure there was all kinds of other stuff going on <coughs> that time too. So thank you, the select board, for you know activating that and so on. Um, this, is, I mean, this is a this is a picture of all the all the water that was rushing down. I mean, it's just, I mean, every, everything at that point was, you know, in, in motion. But uh, that's, that's my property line with the wall right there. So it was, so the property, the property line, the, I mean, the wall was catching the water and it was flowing beyond there, All right? That's actually probably a picture that's going up on the refrigerator. And this is my, what used to be my garden last year that had become a lagoon. Uh, what a nice, kind of, a, you know, Caribbean look, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, the lagoon part of it became, you know, silt. 
I don't know, I think six to eight six to eight inches deep as far as I can see from you know test you know test test sites. But basically my my property, the northeast corner of it, um, I mean it's it's basically um, road dirt and you know gravel and then um, you know a lot of uh, what turned into clay and you know and and, uh, and silt. Let's see. And this is a nice picture of all the silt. <laughs> yeah. And um, and and this is all Charlie Smith's uh, equipment. I mean, it's just. I mean, I was I was just filled with admiration that you know people could you know be handling a steam shovel and then go to the top of this great big hill of dirt and gravel and be scooping like this and then dipping into you know dump trucks. Um, and I mean. One part of me thinks that they were so quick to get on that because they really wanted the road material to bring it someplace else. But Dune is, Dune is correct. He said, well, you did get some help there, didn't you? Uh, yes, I think that's probably true. And I have to you know, uh, commend you know, Charlie Smith for you know, the, the work he did there. Um, let's see. So, um, I'm sorry, Jim. No, this is fine. I mean, it's, it was definitely a, a dramatic event, and there was a lot of material. I guess I um, encourage you to um, come to, uh, you didn't come here just to compliment the, the response of the, the no, road crew in town. Did you? To, I'm trying not to get into angry mode. That's okay, okay. This is the warm, fuzzy part. Well, yeah. I was hoping right. there would be. Um, I mean, I really owe an yeah. apology to Tom Schnabel because he got the angry screaming me. When That's he what I heard. Yeah. 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 You did. But yeah. Okay. I did hear that. Yeah. But this is what I was trying to, you know, work at, you know, with a shovel. But obviously, it's too much. And I talked to FEMA people and, um, you know, the trans and, um, you know, asking was there any way that, with with all this with FEMA money or V trans money. You know what? I would be able to get some, uh, you know, to be made whole for money I'm spending having to clean up my property. And they said I needed to ask the town, so I don't know what the answer to that is, right? And no, I'm not going to let you cut me off, Doom. Thanks. No, that's all right. I've just. And then just uh, this is what Tom Schnabel saw that day. I think he thought that that was all there was to it, but what there was to it was over here, where they're having just machines hour upon hour emptying you know road dirt into dump trucks and that's where I am now where um, I mean I, I, I am going to get a I mean I have made arrangements for a sweeper to get the to get the gravel off my property but and this is right now I thought actually the cell might be okay but it's just there's too much of it so I'm gonna have to I had a choice either to try to you know move it into the soil or you know, just get it down to topsoil. I think decided to get it down to topsoil because it's just much, much too much. Right? So anyhow, um, that's I mean that's you know pictorially what it is, um, and I, and I guess I'm I'm really here. I mean I I expected um, maybe a few more people from Maple Hill to be here, but I don't know. I guess people are busy. Uh, I know uh, I know I know Don's here um, from Maple Hill. But I guess my, I guess really why I'm here is um, well I don't I, I don't know if there's an answer for if there are any funds for making me or other people whole who are spending hundreds of dollars just you know getting their properties back um, to where they were. But but mostly um, I mean I I really think this event you know didn't need to happen. I mean if I if I go up um, Austin Hill and go down Maple Hill, I mean I just you know, you just you just look at the, you know, you look at the, you know, that ditch by the side of the road, and you look at the culverts. And frankly, I think, you know, if you ask me why did this happen, I would say culverts, culverts that weren't cleared, you know, by the by the crews, and also culverts that are undersized, that just aren't the right size for, you know, what what might happen and what in fact did happen here. So I so I guess, you know, beyond the making whole part of it. Um, I'd, I'd really like some answers to, you know, what's the plan for this not to happen again? And, um, 
because I'm, you know, I'm seeing all kinds of plans for Bethel Mountain Road studies and whatever. And I'm seeing a lot of activity on Maple Hill, probably, I don't know, I'm sure it's not a coincidence um, that we're meeting today. But I mean, that actually you have to compliment the road crews. You know, I don't know about the road crews that have been, but the ones I'm meeting right now are actually, you know, I, I, I mean, they've been very, they've really been impressive. And I, I told Ted I would, I would thank him publicly for the job he did moving, you know, you know, moving this junk away. And he didn't even hurt the rhubarb, so I was pleased. Um, but I, but I, I, I guess that's the main question. Just, you know, what, you know, what are you doing? Um, you know, to make sure that, or to try to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And, you know, what ideas do you have for, you know, maybe, you know, making sure that my property in particular, that seems to be on some downward slope, isn't, you know, catching this much water, that the water isn't going into, you know, the ditch it's, you know, supposed to be going into. Because obviously that, I mean, whatever, maybe that's enough. Oh, good. I've succeeded in not getting angry at you. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank that. you. Yeah. So to the um, first answers, I guess, is why did that happen is these ditches and culverts were filled with snow and ice. From, and then we had a heavy snow melt and then a heavy rainfall. So regardless of how big the ditch was or the culvert was, when it's, it hasn't thawed out yet, this is, this is an act of God. This is, there is, if the ditches were twice as big and the culverts were twice as big and they were filled with ice and snow, the same thing would have happened. So as it, you know, we have spent, well, luckily the town has not spent, but through other organizations have spent nearly half a million dollars on culverts on Wing Farm and Maple Hill Road in the last couple of years. So there is, you know, where it's, there is ongoing constant effort to improve the handling of water on the roads. And it's, it's, it, there's, if we had an unlimited budget, there's no way that we could keep these kind of things from happening. It's, um, it's just the nature of living in the mountains, really. This you know? type of event just overwhelms the design. Basically, you know, yeah. unfortunately. Um. So what we can do to move moving forward to try and keep that from happening is is basically just to continue maintaining and improving as we go. I mean, we subscribe to the the state's road standards, and they're constantly upgrading them. And, and we've had a lot of complaints lately that the ditches, why are the ditches so deep? Why are the ditches so big? It's because we've been directed by the state to, to any further work to, to do that. And we've been actually receiving grants over the last couple of years years to improve the, the, the control of water on the roads and, and, and to increase the size of the culverts. So how many culverts did we buy after this storm? How many culverts have you put in since this last storm? I mean, yeah, half a dozen, but we yeah. got a dozen more to go. To go, right. I mean, it's definitely an ongoing thing. There's nothing that we can do that's going to say we fixed all the problems. It's, it's all done. You know. I do know for a fact that the culverts were blocked with ice and snow, or maybe food again. You've got to realize that there's a little over 600 culverts in town. Yeah. We're still replacing the culverts that are 12 inch. Yeah. And their budget to do it. I'm not going to live long enough to replace every culvert to get a bigger. So are you replacing, when, are you replacing we, culverts on Maple Hill right now? There was the 18 inch ones like the ones I see in the chases. There will be two yeah. replaced, but that has to go out the bid to be with the FEMA. Thing, so we have to be patient because the federal government, they don't move too bad. One will be put in, an 18 will be replaced with a 24. And one above that is a 15 that will, will be replaced with an 18. Yeah. Is that going to be big enough? <laughs> you know, I'm cool. Once the top culvert on a hill plugs. Yeah. Which is done. No, I was seeing that. I was seeing the evidence of that. Yeah. The culverts were plugged, yeah. 
But it's fun with ice or snow or five sticks and two handfuls of leaves. <laughs> What's the top one for the, the ones down below don't stand a chance. But, but you have records of regular maintenance of the culverts? I have some records from when I was here before. Yeah. We started checking our culverts about two weeks before this flood. Yes. Yeah. And we have to wait for the snow to get out of the way so we can see. And we'll continue working on that. Could have just I mean, the idea is, I did a look at 600 culverts. Yeah. I've got money enough to change 12 to 15. So I've got to pick the worst. 12 to 15 out of 600. Could have picked, please. I'm not here to pick a fight with, as I said, I know there's been turnover with the road crew and I know. We are trying to upgrade. Yeah. And we did before. But when you've got a bad culvert versus just an undersized culvert that's still working, we're going to replace the bad one first. Yeah. And it takes a long time. And we'll do our best. But that's above your house. Two culverts will be replaced and all that data will be stone line. Good. Yeah, I see that it is being stone line. I know. And yeah, we'll do our best. I can't control water from falling downhill. <laughs> Um, excuse me, John. Did you say that you um, can probably replace 12 to 15, and, you, and there's roughly 600 culverts in town? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to make sure that's another thing. Thank you. 90 to 95 percent of the time, we replace the culvert with the next size larger. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, second point, I guess. Hmm? The second point. Is it money to make all people who are spending money to you know, clear their property? I don't know if FEMA can help you, but there's not money from the town to All the money from the town is going to maintain the roads to yeah. keep the damage from happening in the first place. And there's, and, and like I said, even if we had an unlimited budget, I doubt that we would be able to assure that that would never happen again. You know, it's, um, we're, um, that's not the only part of town that that that's got a had a problem. That's oh, just the only yeah. one I happen to be living in. Yes, but that's the nature of living in the in the mountains. I mean, I get um, I get to wake up in the snowstorms and and pull these off of, off of my wall because the you know the sidewalks are falling apart and I just pick them up and I throw them away, you know, but it's not as much as truckloads of stuff, but it's it got to be worth something, you know, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's haps all over the sidewalks. If we, I wish we had money to fix the sidewalks in town, but we keep putting that off to put money into the roads because it did benefits the, the larger mass, but we're, we're trying to deal with the sidewalks. We were, you know, we've narrowly missed one lawsuit because someone slipped and fell on a steep icy spot that we have plans to fix but it's it's you know right, it's, so, I, I mean i hope you're saving that for the gallery maybe it would yeah have no we'll do, i'll do something interesting with it but <laughs> i just wanted to let you know that you're not the only one with strange things deposited in your yard you know, <laughs> you know it happens no, right downtown you don't have to be in the hills no, nothing you know, strange it's yeah. just what should still be in the road yeah <laughs> right right yeah, I don't throw those back in the road, though. No. Yeah, thank you for bringing that. Maybe yeah. just for me, Alan. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> drama. No. Right. But I think there's somebody else from Maple Hill. Huh? Um, I have large deposits of silt and whatnot in my lawn area. Um, I've cleaned up all the stones, sticks, leaves, Christmas decorations, trash <laughs> that came down into the lawn area, but I'm going to have to hire someone to get the silt and sand off the lawn. Can, can, am I allowed to read a, a letter from someone who was not able to be here, Miriam? I'm sorry, Miriam Francis McIntosh. 
I think she's. Yeah, we have yeah, I have a copy of that here. If, you, if you'd like to read that, go ahead. Yeah, yeah we'd like. Yeah. To. And she she asked me if I couldn't please. Thank you. Uh, this is from Mary Frances McIntosh and, and Chris Kuhn, who live just down from the down from the chases. Along with my neighbor, our property at 557 Maple Hill Road has sustained damage as a result of road conditions on Maple Hill Road. During the heavy flooding rains on, um, I think we have the date wrong, she says April 18th, 20th, uh, both Maple Hill Road and Wing Farm Road could not sustain viability as public roads. As a result of a washout, significant damage created flowing cats of road silt, gravel, sand, salt, rocks, organic and inorganic debris which was dumped on vulnerable properties. Homeowners' properties now now have various levels of damage and uh, are now faced with costly repairs to include removals of tons of heavy sill, damage to grass, perennial shrubbery, driveways, and gardens. The physical challenges when attempting to remove this material have, be, have become backbreaking. And I can testify to that because I've seen Mary Francis out there with a scoop shovel. The material is like uh, cement consistency at depths of four to six inches. We are not road engineers, but we are payers of hefty taxes that provide limited services at best. It is our expectation that roads should be properly maintained, keeping in mind the challenges that unpaved roads are limited at best. Maple Hill Road is well traveled during all seasons. The side ditches are not a total solution. They, the, they become overflowing canals that are unable to manage the bounding water that travels with a damaging intent. That's, that's, that's great. Okay. In the past, it has been suggested that the select board, that the lower half of Maple Hill Road be paid. However, this suggestion was accepted with limited review and instead more costly road construction and perhaps overall damage was incorporated into large, large sums of contracting equipment and manpower with limited successful results. We have concerned citizens who expect an acknowledgement from select board members. Uh, we are aware of other damage sustained in the town. Along with, with attention to Bethel Mountain Road, there are other concerns that we respectfully request the board to acknowledge and a determination of how these residents and their properties can be supported and assisted. Due to job scheduling and travel, we are unable to attend the select board meeting on 5-13-19. However, we are in support of other residents who have experienced property damage with a possible deterioration of property values. We are hopeful our concerns will be heard effectively and our taxes will be applied to assist in correcting property damage and road conditions. Thank you. Do you, do you have copies of this? Do I do, have yeah. We have a copy. Yeah, I have them right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That came to everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I live on Maple Hill. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm your neighbor. I'll have the road from you. Um, I understand <coughs> it's, it's kind of trying and it's an unfortunate situation, but I think it's just part of the territory. Oh, you do? From Dane. Dean, right. Yeah. Dean and... How are you doing? Yeah. Good. But I just think it's, that's, yeah. that's just the cost of doing business. If you're going to live on Maple Hill, you're going to live in Vermont, and live on a dirt road, it's going to happen. You're going to get flooded. We got flooded. My driver got flooded. I missed yeah, a day of work, two days worth of work, yeah. and that's, you know, it's not, I don't have to pay somebody to clean up the damage, but I lose out on wages when I don't go to work. Yeah. So it's all relative. But I understand that that's just the nature of the beast. You win some, you lose some, and if it... It's you this time around, it's going to be somebody else next time around. And it's just the cost, like I said, the cost of doing business. So, you know, the road crews are doing what they can, and I think they're doing a good job, you know. And un unfortunately, half of the time of year it did, um, and there's nothing we can do about that. But I think that uh, this is the right form and the right place to be asking these, uh, yep. asking this of people, but, you know, you might not get what you want. And that just might happen. So I just think we just have to roll with it because we're not the only ones in this situation. You know, we're not the only ones who are ever going to be in this situation. So for right now, we just grin and bear it and move on. Well, I want to grin. Thank you, Dave. Well, we don't have to grin, but we just got to move on. Yeah. You know, just well, I got the points. I got the yeah. points. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to talk about this particular topic? I'd like to say one thing in Wayne Farms' stead. Uh, we just 
completed a six thousand dollar project to use the gravel deposit on our property to rebuild ditches to handle the water off the roads and to protect the buildings um we're not really asking for compensation the only thing we'd like to uh, have changed is not to replace the crown or make it higher between their intersections of all their driveways at the mailbox. It's 50 feet of area we're asking for cooperation with. We understand the culverts are in need and all that, but we just like to keep the water in the ditches if we can. So I'm not sure what you mean about not or keeping the crown minimum because the whole thing about the crown is to keep the water in the ditches. Right. Well, it, right there, uh, it's being shunted into our driveways and between the two barn buildings if the crown is too high by between the mailbox and, you know, it's, it's 50 feet. It's four driveways. We use them daily, mm -hmm. and when the crown is there, it's actually blind driving. You can't see the road at all. If you're at too much of a hump. It also causes problems with plowing over the, the last few years. Uh, the angle is just too high built to, you know, maintain the bottom of the driveway there. Um, it's at the perfect level right now. Last week's deluge. deluge Went into the ditches perfectly fine. Everything was great. We didn't have any water problems. But we'd like to uh, just leave it the way it is. Go ahead and take care of the crown and covering the, you know, repairs. You know, just leave the driveways alone. So you're familiar, you're familiar, I'm sure, with where she's talking about, right, Cooter? Yeah. I think the crown is uh, somewhere in the adequate right now. Well, adequate is two to three percent. I think the crown on that road has been more than that. And when it gets totally regraded, it'll be two to three percent. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, we've lost the end of your driveway twice, twice this year. <laughs> once in January, once in April. Once again, there are standards that the state sets for our roads that include how the road gets crowned and the ditches. And I do have the name of the gentleman that is our district person for those. If you wanted to talk to him about My it. My boss would, yes. Yeah. Thank then you very much. Jim Ryan yeah. would be your man. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Diane. You're on the, the agenda here. I, I got to stand up. Okay, yeah. All right. Please do. I feel more comfortable standing up there. Obviously, we're here. We were three residents are here mm -hmm. because of the speed issue. Mm -hmm. um, I realize that people have to come and go, get down to their jobs, go to the grocery store, go to school, whatever. And it has been a problem in the past with some of the teenagers up in the hollows. But now it is absolutely ridiculous. There is cars going faster down that hill than they're going out there on Route 100, and that's not a joke. You can ask the neighbors. Um, I don't know what you can do, but the first thing I would suggest is put a speed sign up at the top of Brook Street, up by the monument. The speed sign up there now reads 85. <laughs> it's been that way for 10 years. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the next speed sign you'll come to, it says 30, down by Mike and Alyssa's house, right by their garage. Mm -hmm. Now, by the time they get to Mike and Alyssa's, they're already doing 40 or 50 when they go by our house, and then you hear the brakes come on, <laughs> and they slide down onto the tar. And then in reverse, they're hit, they get to Mike and Alyssa's, and they're gunning it Definitely up the gas. Now, I've watched a couple of cars. You can't, you can't pass going that speed. No. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. barely pass going slower. Exactly. Yeah. I was up there today and I came down and I met three cars and one of them almost put me in the ditch. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't happy about that. But there's got to be something with a sign or something down at the bottom of Brook Street. Wednesday, when I was coming downtown, I got right by, where was I? Oh, by Bill Henry's driveway. I looked down and I see a truck coming. So I got down by Shuggy's house and I slowed down. 
because I, the, it was a big truck. It was a big box truck, about 54 feet long. And so I pulled over by Shuggy's driveway, and I sat there. And he's coming at me, and so I'm sitting there going. <laughs> and he stopped. <laughs> So he put his window down and I said, uh, I don't think you want to be going that way. He said, oh, that's where my GPS said. Yeah. Yeah, right. I said, where are you going? He said, Massachusetts. <laughs> I said, then I think you better go back down in 100 and go 107. You're going to get there a hell of a lot faster than you're going to go this way. Mm -hmm. said, oh, okay, thank you. But it's just, and I don't know what else you can do. I know there's caution signs all the way up through there. There's slow signs all the way up through there. I went there today, I checked them all out. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and we have to, no, yeah, yeah, you can't be going fast up there. I had somebody try, the same person twice pass me, go by me, yeah. coming down the hill. Yeah. 20 miles an hour is fast enough on mm -hmm. that road. I would like to propose for the time that Bethel Mountain Road is shut down, that Brook Street from top to bottom be 25 miles an hour. And that's plenty fast in some spots. Yeah, it it's crazy. Plenty down through there. Yes. Yeah. It's just, it's nuts. And this is a month before school is out. Right. Brook Street <laughs> is a residential neighborhood. There is kids, there's animals, there's bicycles. We have 15 to 20 people that walk that hill every day. They're not now because they're too afraid to. Except for the minister, but I think he's got somebody looking out for him. So. <laughs> so, anyway. But it's somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get hurt. And everybody says, "Oh well, we should have said something. We should have said something." We're saying something. Mm -hmm. Something's got to happen before something does happen. Would it help if you put the barriers and the signs down by the parsonage because it's funneling them right up Burke Street? Yes. Because they get up there, right. they go up Burke Street. If the signs are down by the yeah. parsonage. It might cut back on it some. Yeah. Well, and what about at the bottom of Burke Street, like local traffic only? A sign that maybe says, like, or no, no through traffic to Bethel Mountain. It says no through anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but people, uh, I can't even road. count. I'm not road kidding. Road. I cannot count yeah. the number of out of state people yeah. who oh, yeah. turn around in my driveway. Yeah since this happened, not having a clue where they're going because they're getting yeah, phones right Yeah, because Bethel Road is a main thoroughfare. Yeah. I know, but yeah. today I heard two motorcycles coming up the hill, mm -hmm. and Sam was out there. Two motorcycles coming up the hill, and I thought, oh, okay. They got, but all of a sudden, I didn't hear any, mo any more engines going, and it's like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> and my husband Care takes the Henry property, so we're always very vigilant about what we hear for traffic right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I looked out the window, which I can look right down to the road, and there's two motorcycles sitting broadside in the road, talking to Sam with their motors off. And I'm thinking, holy crap, if somebody comes down the hill like they've been coming down that hill, those guys are dead ducks because they're not going to be any place to go. And on that white stuff that's on that road, when it's wet, it's you're on ice. You can't stop. Sure. There was a camper truck and a trailer that came down through there the other day, and I'm thinking, where the hell did that guy come from? He must not have had any brakes when he got to the bottom because he was coming downhill with that big thing behind him. You're going to see a lot of that that's when school's out and people, people are traveling. vacation. People are They're going to be fifth wheels and go behind and coming down the road. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> nice. A lot of people won't even pull over. No, they don't. They, I saw it tonight. Yeah, they won't even pull over. Yeah. 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 And it's not, I hate to say this, it's not all out of towners that are coming down through there. No, no it's not. No. We got a few others that need to slow down too. But I don't know what you can do, but starting with a 25 speed limit might help. I agree. I agree. And that's a process that we would have to go through warn meetings. It's not, we can't right. just decide tonight to make a, a 25 mile an hour limit. But I, I agree that it's something that we should. If it's 25 probably. coming off Bethel Mountain, it should be 25 coming yeah. off Brook Street. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's a good idea. You know. Yeah, and maybe, I don't know, it might help a little bit in addition to some other things we can do, but maybe putting a radar speed sign up there. That has a tendency to slow people down. I was actually mm -hmm. going to suggest that. The other thing is, what's going on with the constable? We don't have one, right? No. 
Have you considered um, hiring the Windsor County that for a reasonable fee that you can We're, it's, it's in process. He's okay. meeting with us tomorrow night, yep. the Budget and Finance Committee meeting, so that's in right. process, yeah. You set him in the Henry driveway and you could pay for that other road. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what yeah. about, and uh, Dane just had an idea too, what about speed bumps in strategic spots, at least temporarily while the road is... You could just stop well, fixing the potholes. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, only, the only thing about speed bumps on dirt roads is it can be hazardous. Mm -hmm. uh, cars can lose control. Uh, I'd well, be a little concerned about that. A good idea, but a little concerned about that. I just mean like toward the bottom where we are, not up on the windy parts, but mm -hmm. like okay. toward the bottom to slow people down because they just tend to gun it right, right at our house. I hear the, I hear their engines. I hear them just mm -hmm. gun it right past mm -hmm. us, and sometimes it makes me so. I mean, the other day, my husband was like, "I want to throw a hammer at the <laughs> windshield," but he didn't. Chris, mm -hmm. Chris he Patrick did. couldn't be here tonight, but he did. We have. Yeah, we have his letter. Yeah. You got his letter? Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you got him buy a tennis ball thrower and start hitting <laughs> 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 Well, also, there's also, like, um, I'm sorry about the construction trucks, you know, when the, especially when the work started. Uh, they they are much bigger than most of our cars. You know, I live up on Brook Street. Uh, and they are sold down. I mean, because they know that I have to get out of the way somehow into the ditch or somehow, you know. So I would also like to please put a huge request to those big trucks to, you know, be considerate of our smaller vehicles. But when the roads are soft, they can't pull over. They'll be right in the ditch. Yeah, I, they they right they yeah. Yeah. They also I, I think the trucks go down. They, they, that's, that's the washboard. You know, they create the washboard, but they don't start all, uh, slowing down, down, breaking them. Uh, the I'm having that washboard the in the middle of our house. Uh, yeah. the, <laughs> the heavy trucks ran for two weeks while we were getting people accessed out of their driveways and getting the road put back together so that you can travel back and forth. Um, that was only a two-week period. The truck traffic should be greatly diminished now. I um, haven't seen any. Right. 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 Because the technically the roads are still posted for a couple more days, so yeah. they're, they're not yeah. allowed on the roads right now. Yeah. Okay. That's Martha, you had a question? Yeah. Um, when, um, in, in regards to her suggestion about having the speed limit posted, you said something about that would take a while, but I didn't hear the yeah, rest there's of a special that. procedure for that. To get that done? We have to have a special town meeting, and it has to be warned. Oh. It's, it's, Seriously? Yeah. yeah. We, remember yeah. You can't do an emergency just, thing while the other road is shut down? Maybe we can go with, a, with an orange construction. If we wanted to call it a construction zone, it's not. Call it a construction not. zone. Yeah, like they do in a construction zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cuts the speed. Cuts the speed limit in half. You have to. Yeah. You have to come up with some we'll construction to do to there to make it all legal. <laughs> <laughs> we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Mary Ann Day right here. You can do that. Yeah. That's, I mean, those. That's a suggestion. It's really not a law. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be right. Call the state and that's them what they can do since it's an alternative road. Never. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that would be. We're not advertising it, it is, as a detour. Because it's legally out there and write any ticket. Right. It, it, you, can't put, you can't put a no detour sign there because yeah. somebody said it's FEMA money. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. it's, there's a lot of restrictions around detours and what you can and can't can't lay. You can't. Well, it's it's not really officially a detour for Bethlehem Mound Road because you're not allowed to no, detour. No, detour the other way. No detour the other way. Well, yeah, it's um. Well, it hasn't been signed as a detour for that to go. It it should be. Got to keep it all the way to Bethel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the seven signboards, right? Mm-hmm. That's your $31,000. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100, 107 to 12. Yeah. yeah. I got to And suggest, that has to be on the other side, too. If, uh, if the state could put up an Interstate 89 <laughs> sign by the state mark point south, mm -hmm. that would maybe stop a lot of people from trying to go over the mountain. It's just, just a simple song, but I think that might alleviate some of the traffic. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good idea. A lot of well, traffic yeah. is going over. It is going totally over. going over for okay. the yeah. 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 And, it, and it's not any, 
There's only two miles difference now by mm -hmm. like going around. Yeah. And it's quicker to go around. It is quicker, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. much quicker, yeah. 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 People it's a lot smoother, too. I do it every day. Yeah. <laughs> There's only two miles difference now. They'd argue with you because they're going to go 50 up there and make up for the times when yeah. they do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want a second. I'm at the bottom of the hill, and I'm getting the fast starting up, and then it gets to Alyssa, and then it gets to Diane. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're getting the brunt at the bottom, getting ready to go up. Mm, yeah. So it's yes. Chris, crazy. Chris said he's been yelling at speeders because they're going yep. by his hill. So. Yeah. yeah. So it's, Once they get to the top, they, yep. they maximize their speed. I'll tell you. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's going to get worse once it's cool, I'd say. Mm -hmm. You get all those kids on Brook Street. There's only three houses on Brook Street that don't have kids. Well, we could put signs up saying, you know, children playing in There is one, right by yeah. Mike and Alyssa's house. There's yeah. one, but there was. it doesn't matter. Yeah. We're still going. It's on the going uphill or downhill? Down going downhill. Okay, I didn't see one going uphill. No, no, no. 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 Mike and Alyssa's <laughs> over there. I would add to uh, Diane. Yeah. I went up the street this afternoon yep. and so forth. It was probably four o'clock or so. And I was amazed that the only way I could travel with my pickup without jumping all over the road was going on the left hand side. And I'm not opposed to doing that and so forth because that is the way I've always driven is on the back road. Mm -hmm. You go on the left hand side, it's the right hand side, it's a wash party. Right. Because on the right hand side, my pickup would, would jump all over the place mm -hmm. and make more water yeah. we all worse. know that yeah. Yeah. but anyway i have to <clears throat> respect the fact i didn't happen to meet anybody until i go out on the flat yeah. and up the hill i'm on the left hand all the way by diane's house and i end up by uh, north bend i was on the left hand side not a good idea marvin <laughs> 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 and, and I, I felt yeah. safe yeah. if i met anybody yeah. at that speed that you're talking about yeah. it's ridiculous oh, no. yeah no. No. But then by, by, you know, before Debbie's house, then there's the sharp turn. So, like, I, I've tried that, like, you know, on the left side, all of a sudden, if somebody goes fast from the top, you're like, oh, uh -huh. <laughs> you are in trouble. Like, so, like <laughs> in, in the middle, like, you know, are you like this slalom? It's like you try to avoid the potholes now, the washboard, the everything. It's going to be good. <laughs> We've got a chance to see uh, road rage, actually. Oh, yeah, on, on Brook Street? Oh, it's screaming and hollering at each other. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, there, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, so you're the one going too fast, huh? No. <laughs> Excuse me, where, where are you on Brook Street? Yeah. Oh, it's amazing how people's countries are. What, uh, what color are right. their license plates? Hi. They're all different colors. All different colors. <laughs> yesterday, yeah. yesterday, yesterday, at least I can attest to this. Ninety percent of the cars that went up the hill were out of staters. Yeah. Yeah, it's picked up off this weekend. Yeah. Uh, weekends are bad. A lot more, more tracking has been the last few weekends. Mm -hmm. This one they've caught on finally. So we can start to use them out a lot more. A lot more. Yeah, I've seen a tractor with a sleeper bobtail down through there, and I can't figure out how local that is. No. no. Yeah, I see that one, the red one. Yeah, that's all. Uh, it was four. There was four Ontario motorcycles that came down through there last Sunday. Mm -hmm. I could hear them rumbling as they came down the hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was quite a few last weekend. We hired a sheriff. Sounds like his first yeah. job. Yeah, the, 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 um, like I said, we're meeting with the, the sheriff tomorrow, and and I think we know we, where to put him when yeah. he's when he's. His um, first job is be Burke Street. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, let him have uh, free hot coffee. And <laughs> 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 yeah. Whatever. All right. That's really going to be the best. The best I think option that's really. People. They did it in in uh, Hancock on the flat there where people were speeding. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. You pay attention now when you go through there. You do. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean. you're meeting with the Windsor County Sheriff's Department tomorrow. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And also, Dylan, you're very brave. One day I saw you and Andy bike up that uh, up Brook Street. So it's like <laughs> yeah, well. you're very brave because that's <laughs> that's. Uh, uh, very dangerous. The first, yeah. the first Sunday that the road was out, I was backed up in my driveway, looking both ways. Suzelle Harvey was on her bike, right opposite me, going up, and that that caution sign was in the road at that point. 
um, this Connecticut pickup was following her up the hill. He was doing fine, wasn't doing anything wrong. All of a sudden, this SUV comes down the hill between me and her and the pickup truck, not slowing down one bit. They had to have been hitting 40 by the time they got to Mike and Alyssa's. And it's like, where the hell did he come from? And so the Connecticut truck went up, I went down the hill and I looked and Suzelle's just trying to get back onto her bike. I don't know if she jumped off because she got scared or what, but it's like, this is crazy. Yeah. I think it's Bethel Mountain Road. That's, they do. They're treating it as Bethel Mountain. Yeah. Yep. By the time I get home, I can have two or three cars behind me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, usually there's four or five in a row going down the hill together. You're all required. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bruce, the eyes are really still. Roll it and block. After the library, he's up behind him. He's just having a constable. We need to go to the library. Yeah, I'm going to stack this big thing. I'm going to get it out of the house. Well, thank you, guys. Does anybody have a help? I'm glad we can all find a laugh here. Yeah. Well, I think that um, there's some good ideas. So, one final thing, I would like to commend the, the road crew for what they have yep. done yep. with what they've had to deal with. Yes, and I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was. Annie, you had something you want to say? Well, I just want to say that I think that um, it really seems like we should be taking care of Brook Street because, as you know, we love it too. And I'm not walking the dog or riding the bike up there either at the moment. But more importantly, I'm actually concerned about people getting into the village over the summer. And so I know that the signage is expensive, but I think it might be worth helping people get here in a, in a reasonable way. I've had a few people who are, you know, taking much longer to get here, and I know that that, and I just know that there are businesses that can't really afford to have that kind of thing happen. So I don't know. I think it might be worth thinking about proper signage at that junction of um, 107 and 12 and. Right down Buffalo. Yeah, down there. I think it really would be. I mean, because of all of the social activities that happen here, all the programming, you know, this, this, the village really does depend on that. You know, some people might not realize it, but a lot of businesses are depending on that kind of traffic. And I would hate to see Route 100 get shut down again to, you know, proper traffic through here, just because we haven't handled it properly. <coughs> So the problem is that even before that happened, uh, GPS tells people to go yeah. over the Bethel Mountain Road. Oh, yeah, I stopped a truck and I died. When you come yeah. to Cambrook Street, that sign is just too small. Uh, that like trucks over some like weight, I don't know, like they are not. So a sign that would be like, you know, coming off the interstate, you know, like through 12, saying that just to Rochester go 107 instead of over the mountain, that would, have, that would be helpful in all, at all times. It, just as a matter of interest, um, could it, what about the signs? Would we actually own those signs? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, what, what I want to say is I think we're in the middle of, you know, global warming, climate change See? being See? Yeah, very easily happen that we need to reroute traffic again in the future. Yep. I think that's really what we're up against. And so thinking about preparation in the future for things that we have that actually help us to get people here and out of here in a, in a reasonable way that doesn't tax, you know, roads that are not meant for this kind of traffic. Mm -hmm. In the last three weeks, we spent $5,000 on signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we need more, though. I think because this doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. I'm with them. I, I think that that's not, that's a road that doesn't need to have that kind of traffic on it. And we'll end up with bigger problems on that road. Mm -hmm. There was, I've got an update for the GPS. When I went downtown this afternoon after I was checking all the signs from the top to the bottom, um, I got right down at the intersection and there was a white vehicle with all kinds of signage all over it and a weird looking thing on the roof. And so the guy had just kind of pulled up and was stopped there. So I pulled it beside of him and I said, uh, you, you going over to Bethel? He said, oh, well, I was just checking my GPS stuff. And it's like, well, you don't want to go that way. He said, no. He said, how far up that road is that um, closed? And I said, well, up to the next intersection. Well, he is the guy from TomTom, Tom, which mm -hmm. is the GPS mm -hmm. person. Yep. So he was going to put on his GPS that that road was closed. 
He said, I'm going to update this. That is closed. Good. I said, it may be till Christmas. He said, OK. <laughs> oh, Good. I hope not. Good. Hopefully, Halloween maybe. <laughs> he didn't get his phone number, did you? Because we have reached out to these GPS companies in the past trying to to get Bethel Mountain Road reclassified and I, and I stopped a, a big truck or I he was already backing up and I made the comment that he um, he needed a, um, a commercial GPS, not a, a, a yeah. consumer GPS and he said no this is a commercial GPS mm -hmm. And is sending me this way, so that that whole you know thought that people are going there because they have the wrong GPS is is that's not the case. It seems it's just in general the you know. The well, this guy has said Tom Tom on the side of the yeah. car and it was in the Hampshire license plate. So. Martha, it's just even even before the, the road was damaged. I mean, I drive that road. I was I go to Randolph every day to work, and coming home. Um, I ran into some, uh, someone who was, well, anyway, they were in the middle of the road and they were stopped and they couldn't figure, they, it looked like they couldn't figure out what to do. And um, they wanted to, they were looking for Route 100, but they had turned, well, I was up, I was going up in the hall to see a friend and they had turned that way because GPS told them to, even though there's clearly marked a sign that says Rochester with a left-hand arrow no. and everything. Death said, by oh, GPS. I sign, no. but I figured GPS knew the best, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. they ignore the sign that belongs in the local spot. But people do read, ignore the sign. Mm -hmm. do. Anyway, so, sorry. so be assured that this is um, going to do everything we can to, um, one, I think it's worth having, a, um, whether it's uh, making it a construction zone and lowering the speed limit that way or going through the process to lower the speed limit in general um, and then get in the, you know, seeing how quickly we could get the, the marshal to be patrolling it and, and start, um, yeah. Would it help if Bethel put their barriers up like we've got them, where you're blocking off one lane? I'm sure it, I'm sure Because they've it got both of their lanes. I was over there today. They've yeah. got some signs up. But the barriers are off to the side of the road, so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if they had them blocked. No, like people, we um, people don't seem to care about the barriers. The other, the other day, someone had opened up the barriers. We had the Jersey barriers across there, totally blocking Bethel Mountain Road. And then we opened it up so the workers could get up there to do the coring. And um, Kevin Doherty came down and asked me Sunday if we had opened the road because <laughs> they had been moved and, and he'd seen people were driving through there. And I said, no. And so we closed them yeah. off again. And, you know, yeah, people, people do what they want. They do. do. Yeah. 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 That's all yeah. they care about. Uh, it's yeah. currently closed off where yes. there's no place to turn around. I mean, you could turn around in the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no place to turn around. Mm -hmm. So it's, well, the it's end pretty says, First of all, at 85, you know, it says it's been like a joke for many mm -hmm. years, but mm -hmm. now it's like, I think yeah. this yeah. is like, the joke is over. Yeah. Yeah. Not 85. Yeah. Yeah. It can clearly see, but that has, should have been replaced by the, you know, yeah. a long time ago. I can get some white spray paint. Yeah. All right. Um, so, thank you for your encouragement to do something more. And we are not sparing a minute to get this all behind us. No. Um, Christmas is not on our agenda. <laughs> Way before no. Christmas, Diana. Well, so is there any update as to when they might start there? Um, we have they, done the. Go ahead. They have. They have started. They've already surveyed they were it. Drilling yeah. it. They were drilling in, in the survey, and tonight we're actually going to authorize Dubois and King to move ahead on the next phase of the, the project. So it's definitely been on the fast track. To, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bill Henry's. Oh. Yeah. You, did you want Bill Henry's address? Um, I think Joan was looking for it earlier. I, I, I can I can take it. Yeah. Um, I also have contact with the Henry family, but I, I, yeah, I'd love to have that one from you. Yeah, I think he's turned it over to the boys. Yeah, and the boys are who I've been talking oh, to. Oh, you have? Okay. About real okay. estate okay. stuff, yeah. but I've got, I, this helps too. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. So, um, Martha, you had something on the agenda as a guest you wanted to talk about. Oh, that was, um, it's also under new business, too. Um, I'm the chair of the 4th of July parade every year. 
And I just wanted, um, you have a form that I filled right out. Here. Yeah. Just wanted permission from the board to um, um, do, have to use the park. So yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a parade on Bethel Mountain Road in Brook Street. Fourth <laughs> 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 <Or> of July. <laughs> They'll slow down the traffic. We'll just have a parade yeah, on there. Yeah, there's no traffic, so you can have a parade up you and know, down you're there. Right. That might mm -hmm. be an idea for mm -hmm. me, but I think I'll go with you. Yeah, okay. so I, I'd, I'd move to approve that application. I would second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Yep. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, so that um, speaking of um, Jones updates and the work on Bethel Mountain Road, I would uh, move to authorize DeBlon King to move ahead with Phase B tasks three and four mm -hmm. starting immediately. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's on the we'll record. We can do that. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you faster than sorry. We just want to get it done fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're moving right we're, along. Um, we're authorizing Du Bois and King to move ahead with Phase B tasks three and four of the work on Bethel Mountain Road. Right. It's, it's an engineering phase. Yeah. So. It's the engineering phase. It's not. You're not going to see dump trucks headed up there yet. Not but, yet. Yeah. And what had been done was called boring. And what they did was drill down through the road to look for bedrock, to look for the ledge under the road. The initial reports were very positive that they found good hard ledge, not a lot of shaley ledge, um, not very far under the road. Um, it was also noted that the road was in worse shape than we thought. There were still, there were even more undermining of the pavement that wasn't even discovered yet. So um, what we're doing, we were reassured that we are going in the right direction. We, we should be doing this. And that what we're building upon the base is a good, hard, solid base. So, so far, things are going our way. I, I've got a question. You said the ledge was up to, close to the surface of the road. Within 24 inches. It's in, within 24 inches in some right? spots. Well, in some that. spots, there was 12 inches of pavement, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Some spots. Yeah, there's 15 feet. Yeah. So yeah. um, the, it, 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 they, they, they said it, what we're doing is a good thing. Is, right. We're, we're yeah. doing the right thing. I am pleased to hear that because I, people have been asking me, and I said, I expect it's all going to be all clay. That wasn't clay. No. Yeah. No. No. Well, bedrock isn't the best either. So no. When it's sloping. <laughs> That's for the engineers to figure <laughs> out. <laughs> yep. Um, Tony, uh, do you have anything here on behalf of the library to speak about? No, I just say keep uh, track of uh, Jeanette's posters. There's a lot of stuff there. Mm -hmm. And we have a quote in the folder for uh, Chimney yeah. that we will review. Yeah. Um, I guess we've talked a lot about the highway tonight already, but do you have anything else you want to add to the... I think you've heard it all. We've heard it all. All right. Yeah, just keep up the good work. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank well, you. Well attended meeting. Yeah. And, uh, and um, this was actually on our agenda. As aside from thanking the road crew, we also wanted to thank the fire department for getting up so early and putting up cones when all that damaging was happening. There was probably some, you know, some damage was avoided by that, and that quick action. And thank you for making that happen. And also, thank you for the Recreation Committee for getting the, the park raked up and ready for um, Actually, summer. Actually, it wasn't the Recreation Committee. It was the um, Tri-Town Tri -town Sports. Tri-Town yeah. Sports. Oh, OK. And there was a nice picture on the front page of two little guys with their rakes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And then again, thanks for the road crew for picking up the piles of stuff yeah, that so they I'm raked up. <laughs> yeah. The road crew did pick up yeah. a giant pile of stuff they raked yeah. up. So, yeah. 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 Um, Terry, did you have anything to talk about in the utility land? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had to walk around on Monday. Yeah. Last Monday. 
and state guy was there, Brian, for part of it. He basically wanted to see how the systems work. Uh, I said there's, you know, ours is one of the one of a kind in the state. Yeah. Big. There's not very many other ones. So you want and you want to understand how I got my numbers and like the numbers, you know. Is mid through mission for two of the systems, but number one is just the only thing we can do is off the counter. Mm -hmm. Is off how many times pump runs, which is very inaccurate as far as up and down. And I told him we, I'd gotten a price off mission. We talked about getting that put in last year when we did the uh, upgrade. And they wanted but what, they 10, wanted 10,000, right? Grand. Yeah. And I got a price on it the other day to put it in for $3,100. So that's a good thing we procrastinated that. <laughs> <laughs> and I explained right. to him that we were planning on doing it this year, and he was quite happy to see that done. Yeah. Uh, they were down the other day because I was having problems with the, the counter on the site four, and plus I've had troubles since they shut the power off the other night. Mm -hmm. Uh, the pumps kicked off twice, number one, but it's been running fine the last two weeks. So uh, I looked into getting a new pump. They don't make that style anymore. It's a 15 horse, and the only thing that's going to take its place is a 25 horse. Uh, but the guy was here, and we went through the control, and the control big enough to take the 25, so mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. Uh, the big deal is getting it. Uh, and so I guess I'd like, it, and that is like 9,100. Mm -hmm. But they're 15 years old. Both pumps are in there. Bad environment. I really think we should get one coming just to have it here. And then I'd let the other ones run. They've already knocked down, they're down to about 12 gallons a minute less than what they used to pump when they were no. They're pumping around about three gallons a minute. 94. One's 92 or almost 93, and the other one's like 95. And they used to be like around 106. Mm -hmm. But that's not unusual for the age. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'd like permission to order the, the mission, which in the budget, <clears throat> We haven't done anything on repairs this year, and got six thousand dollars in there, and that would pay for the missions pretty easy. And right now, our budget's uh, fifteen thousand dollars underneath what it was budgeted for, and we got just a month left. So I'd, I'd like to order that other pump and right. at least get it here. Yeah. yeah. Because we'd be screwed. Yeah, might as well. Both of them go down. Yeah. This is not a two-day pump getting in here. No. Yeah, I it think that's... Be, the view. I mean, you could probably get in here in two days, but you're going to pay dearly. Yeah. For both pieces. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. It sounds good to me. What is it you're ordering, Carrie? And I checked with Webb about the pump, because I questioned the guy pretty heavy about jumping mm -hmm. from 15 horse to 25. That's quite a quite an increase, but... I was over with the other day and I was talking to Kelton over there and he looked it up because I had the numbers with me and he says, yeah, you're going to have to go that big. And their price was a little bit higher than Champlain. Is that, do you think, is being oversized like that? Is it going to last any longer or is it just going to? Probably not. Probably not. I won't last as long. Yeah. New or bomb. Yeah. The old one seemed last best, best, but I still don't think we should replace it until. So oh, yeah, but it'd be nice to be able to replace it immediately when it does right, go. Right, because yeah. something should happen. Both of them go. Now, if the money's in the budget, that's getting towards the end of the. And that, season. there's also like uh, we looked it up. I think it's twenty-two thousand in the reserve fund. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's not going to increase anybody. Yeah. And all of our other pumps are pretty new. Yeah. All right, I'd say go ahead. You agree, Tom? You're looking pensive. I think so. Yeah. 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 
go for it. Order. Okay, so this is a larger pump he's ordering, right? Yes. Okay, it's actually only, it's a larger pump, but it does the same. Same thing. The there. And it's only larger because they don't make the smaller one. Okay. They don't make that series. That series. So it's mm -hmm. And that's all? All right, Terry, okay. is that the same manufacturer of pump as the 15? It's a crane instead of a Burns. Okay. Uh, but he Burns doesn't make that model. That's why they had to go with crane to get one to pump that. Because of the elevation, you got about 1,700 linear feet of pipe to go through. And the elevation, I forgot what he's, it must be close to 50, 60 feet of elevation, I'm assuming. So, okay. that's why we're in that category. And we really need something that pumps at 100 gallons a minute, you know, produces 100 gallons a minute to make it. <coughs> okay. To make the system work up there, yeah. actually a little bit more would be better because I'd like to see it surcharge. I think I'd get more even. All right. Thank you. Um, is this where you are hoping to to have your your questions brought in, Mason? Oh, I'll see a new business at the end. Yeah, that's where we are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, done. Could you step in front of the camera, please? Mm -hmm. Come around yeah. to the front of the camera. I was planning on it. Okay, good. Right. I had good. to organize that. Yeah. Okay. Very cold, sir. For two and a half years, you know, I've been trying to actually be in a situation to help God not flood my property by stopping a road being built by my house, which is downhill with a tremendous water problem. And it seems like it would be cost effective for this town not to be doing this. Um, consequently, I've spent a lot of time <coughs> with um, doing research in Bethel, uh, excuse me, uh, the uh, Joseph Battelle uh, Middlebury College archives, the state archives, Hancock archives. And uh, there seems to be some issues going on right now that we need to have some clarity on 2017 where uh, Walt, Kiefer Bill, Eric, Jenny, we're very, very serious that TH29 did not run magically through Smokey's property. And that should have been refiled with uh, the Agency of Transportation. And it seems like a lot of people are very confused about that still. So tonight I'd like to have a public record request form uh, for the information relating to the town informing the state of Vermont that the magic road through Smokey's property never existed. And also, wait, when that was a wait, just saying, just yeah. it's okay, we don't have to have debate or anything, you know, not, on this not I'm just process, curious if you're saying it's, never existed or never went through that land. I'm just curious. TH29 never went through Smokey. Okay, that's different property. than never existed. I'm just clarifying uh, that. I'm just clarifying yeah. where the roads are. And it magically yes. connected with TH18, which Hancock is seriously dealing with with the state because the state's watching all this. And what, what, what's, what's this hanging chad up here? This little piece of state, uh, road. So, 1921, a petition, October 8th. Uh, Dunham, Taylor, Martin, and Blair, most likely all gentlemen, since I don't think in 1921 women were involved, uh, they petitioned the Hancock Select Board to discontinue all roads in Bingo Basin that they had, uh, except at the end of Bingo Road up at the Smith uh, 
farm heading over to Ira Whitney. Now, that was because Middlebury College had a barn. And so, uh, between October 8th and the 22nd, only four people petitioned in Hancock. Now, I want to remind you all that on, we had 100 people petition to do a disclosure, to, to shut down. So 100 people in this town. And here's four people. You get an instant response from the select men at the time. Um, and they had to discuss this with all interested parties. So that means they had to talk to the select board in 1921, uh, just prior to, to our select board in 1921, October. So between the 8th and the 22nd, we must have minutes of our select board in conversation with them. So I would like to file another public forum in relation to that to see if we can come up with those minutes. And it seems like Hancock is doing pretty good. They got minutes going all the way back to 1921. Thank you. Um, so did this magic TH-18 get uh, dedicated after 1921? And how did this situation all happen that off the 68 acres that Hancock created a tax sale with a magic road that connected through, and now I am dealing with all this. So uh, that's th those issues, and I'm also curious in trying to figure all this out, when did Rochester annex the town of Robinson? There must be records on that, uh, but in everything I've seen so far, it's hard to really see that. And so I'm kind of curious about that. Um, so actually, uh, Mara, it's really interesting that you're here tonight. I'm sure you had a great vacation and everything. Uh, the U.S. Forest Service, the CCC, built the, uh, uh, the bridge across uh, Bingo Brook in the 30s. I don't know if you remember that, in the sense of not say, you know, in, <laughs> you know not to say how old you are, but, <laughs> but somehow the CCC built a bridge. They built a bridge. Did they get, what was the arrangement? Was it with Robinson? Was it with Rochester? Who owned the bridge? What were they trying to do? Were they trying to get to Thrusher Road, which used to be the Jeep Road? And then when we all realized the U.S. Forest Service built 62, why? Because of the mountain, the water. And that was before climate change. So I, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted, Frank, in two and a half years. It's absolutely ridiculous. $40,000. Yeah, and by the way, the town could have been spending this money on fixing important things in town, like sidewalks. Mm -hmm instead of creating new expenses. I'm telling you, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot there. I'll let that go from there. Yes, yeah, actually, this is related to one of those two. So, Annie. What, what is it oh, related to one of those? Oh, you can read them, I didn't have my glasses on. You can reread them there. They're hanging from your neck there. Oh, yeah. If you're gonna present a request okay, for information, we got. Okay, I'll, I'll read all four of them. The four? You summarized the first three. The last fourth oh. one is what I'm oh, oh. curious I'm about. Yeah. God, Mason, I need to be attending more select board. Yes. Yeah. Yes, this will be going on two and a half years. Oh, It'd be yeah. nice. You'd be amazed at all the different maps out there with everybody yahooing around changing them. Uh, requesting documents related to information, the state of Vermont, the ATOT mapping, the, the recording of TH-29 through the Casella Marty uh, property, formerly Smokies, 43 acres, was not correct. Also, a copy of the filing of the incorrect notice to the state in the beginning. Who okayed that road? Uh, requesting documents related to the town of Robinson annexing the town of, excuse me, 
requesting the document related to the town of Rochester annexing the town of Robinson, including dates and those signing. Is there a fourth one in here? I thought you said there was four. I thought yeah. so too. Oh, uh, maybe I have another one. Would that be it? Requesting select board minutes between the dates of October 8th uh, and October 27th, 1921, at which time the select board of Hancock contacted Rochester about discontinuance of roads in Bingo Basin. You gotta get lost in all the paperwork. So I'm curious, oh, is, is there some redundancy here with the the work that um, the lawyer that you've previously um, retained to do this you know, work? Doug, is this I, work I'm that interested in talking to the people of town and letting no, the people of town start realizing of these issues. Because I, I go around and people go, oh, gosh, wasn't that solved a long time ago? And Dylan, this is taking a huge toll on me on my work, not being able to, to focus, it's, it's stressful. And it shouldn't I be this way. And I've already spent more money than all the taxes I've spent on this town. Here is the other one. Requesting Rochester select board minutes of the dedication and creation of TH-29 and the maps. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, that's... Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, I guess on that same note, Harlan, you had made a request for some information, so I, I have it here, a bunch of stuff here for you. I, it's um, what we found relative to your request for information, so... Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. You Thank go. you. You're welcome. I'll look this over and yeah. get back to you. All right, there you go. Um, and that's um, that's basically relating to the old business of the missing book in the town records. And uh, we did find a book that is actually relating to all of the town roads spanning from the 1870s to 1894 to 1970s. So that covers the period that you were curious about in terms of town still, road I issues. Still, I still prefer yep. to see, I'd like to see the select board meeting. Yeah. I'd like to get what I know. Yeah. Are you still looking for that? I mean, have you gone through everything and it's not there? So far, there's a summary of all that is right in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what you got so far? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And unless anything has <coughs> anything else to talk about tonight, I think that's it. Right? Well, there will be an update on the progress of uh, road repairs at the next high court meeting. Always. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Always. Thank you.